this beard is uh, putting uh, you know into your uh, actual age bracket you don't need to have yeah. a beard you look like a <laughs> seed entrepreneur just graduating from college <laughs> So Rajesh, let's begin the series with a rather interesting question, something I did not know about, which is that your website mentions that you are a pole vaulter. Would love to know more about this and experience and also how you relate this to the startup journey. Yeah, I think, I, I think Alok, uh, this is one of the less known facts uh, about what I've uh, done in my extra correct. Um, pretty much very less known sport in India. <laughs> I think I climbed about, I, I used to jump about 2.6 meters, right, um, oh. back in college. And um, and it's not a fancy story leading up to it, by the way, because um, I was in the athletics team, right, um, you know, enthusiastically taking part in events. I was giving my shot at uh, sprints, I was giving my shot at, uh, you know, relays and all of that. And um, even at a hostel team level, right, I was not able to, you know, <laughs> become a part of the team. So, <laughs> pole vault to kisi ko aata nahi hai. So, logo ne bola, halka hai, halka hai, fulka hai. Isko pole, pole vault try karate hai. So, they just yeah. gave me the bar and asked me to jump. And I jumped. Wow. <laughs> so, I think uh, relating to the startup story, I would say is that, uh, you know, I think for anything you do in the startup journey, you need to put in a lot of effort. While you're putting in a lot of effort, 100 things won't come through. So I could never participate in a formal race of 100 meter sprint, 400 meter uh, relays, 400 meter dashes. Right? But as a result of being there, right, there was just a sport which my seniors said that, you know, you should be able to do. And little also, they knew that I would be able to do something. And then I started practicing and, uh, you know, a few jumps. I knew that I could do it well. And uh, that's the that's sort of a unique journey of why I pulled vaulted. <laughs> wow. And now you have pole vaulted as an entrepreneur also, clearly. So, so Rajesh, you know, one of the questions actually we also try and answer all the time as investors, I'm sure you do as an angel investor, is that what are the traits that make a successful founder? And at least our belief is that there is no unique trait. Everybody is sort of, there is, everybody is different. So keen to understand what are the traits that you think have helped you become a successful founder and what do you think you started with and what new traits have you developed in the process? Yeah, I think, look, uh, as you rightly said, uh, like a successful entrepreneur, successful founder, I think can't be boxed, as you rightly said, right? In my context, the relevance has been, uh, I think, uh, I think resilience and perseverance, right? Largely, I would say, are probably the two qualities which we as founding team, I think, brought to the table building Black Park. And that has probably, you know, that is a result of probably 80% of the success we till now had, right? Because my core belief is that any industry you're trying to sort of, you know, transform, you're trying to take a like, you know, big bet on something, right? In a very, very long term, like industry organically offers you, you know, a few discontinuities, right? So essentially, you need to come in into you know doing something with the right intent, with an intense uh, you know orientation towards it. Perceive that throughout. There'll be and so many yeah. failures that you need to be resilient, sort of come back at it always that and then be true to your mission. While you're doing this in a pretty long term, right? Industry will give you discontinuities, right? So pretty long term can be ten years, twenty years, and yeah. and and you need to sustain yourself through this, right? And and. I think this is probably, you know, I would say in a, like an abstraction of anyone's success, you know, to being a found like in, in a company in a particular space. And few things which I would say that uh, you know have got developed uh, through and throughout, probably more awareness, right? I think uh, um, earlier, largely I was hustling and did not know what really was working out, what really was doing well. Like, you know, as, as traits as well, right? And now I think far more calmer, far more aware, far more pullback and ability to think yeah. has sort of, you know, come in, uh, you know, with uh, too many failures, <laughs> too many ups and downs. And and yeah, and rest all broadly same. I think uh, the ability, I think something which I've been able to recognize is that ability to carry that uh, mission uh, journey, you know, for as long as 
till it sort of you know gets conquered it's probably something which i've you know become aware that that's there in me and in the founding team and the leadership team and i think that's keeping us sort of going and that's you know getting us closer to the mission one step at a time you know every time you know your combination of intensity and perseverance almost sound like that you are running a sprint but you are running a marathon of course and yeah. in some sense you entrepreneurship ends up combining the two together um yeah. great so rajesh i'll move on to some specifics or your experiences at blackbuck to begin with uh, maybe i'm taking you many years back here you know as you said you deal with truckers this is not sort of uh, an e-commerce business uh, uh, kind of a thing and building credibility and transparency with this group of people is actually very hard how did you go about doing that and what were some of the unexpected challenges that you faced and how did yeah. you overcome those challenges in sort of getting these people to believe in you yeah so i think um uh, alok as you rightly said i think when we started this journey right uh, uh, obviously we knew that we needed truckers on our side we needed uh, to get to them solve their problems but literally like you know one is always a prisoner of his own imagination right and largely all all of us the founding team were from a enterprise business setup we were in itc buying freight and organizing freight for companies so we thought right. broadly that's like you know the world view and i think t- probably till uh, till 5 years so when when we started off i think my belief was that i know this industry like 80% right yeah and i think the last 5 years right last 6 7 years i think every year this number like has come down by like 10 to 15 percentage points right and um literally the uh, you know the flywheel or the core problems of this industry which had to be solved resided on the supply side which we didn't have any clue while we were building things at itc right so um you know trucker problem uh, is is probably you know the core and the only problem we are solving right and we happen to make peace with that this is the core problem and this is the hardest problem we need to solve back in probably 3 years after starting up which is like roughly 2018 time right when we started blackbuck uh, the trucker smartphone penetration was 40% driver smartphone penetration was 7% right wow uh, and uh, we like and we were dealing with like saying that you know we need to organize this industry we need to provide services to these guys like you know technological right? today obviously you know there is a massive base which the company has we have about 2 million registered operators with us 1 million of them are monthly active right now the <laughs> now if, if i tell you right building a technology company little did i know back in 2015 that truckers like it, it was very obvious right truckers are educated like not literate right will not trust anyone very easily right? so all these users who have like got onboarded i would say 50 60% of them have been onboarded through touch right through a omni channel strategy by being by going to the villages right or tele right and wow. most and 50 60% of them have done their first you know internet banking transaction or any monetary transaction first time with us right so you know it really was essentially a very rustic you know dhool mitti journey right and mm. obviously outside in it's a technology company everything happens on the app but to be able yeah. to build out this platform and distribution network everything had to be plowed through the ground right so uh, so yes so i think uh, you know uh, uh, building trust was all about being in like you know being like them with them in their places talking in their language angle of attack being in the language and in the genre in the vibe which they understand right hand holding them one by one right so truckers the first time they have got ever onboarded with blackbuck they never first ever have onboarded for a load they have got onboarded for a service which essentially they can trust very easily and then like that rub off of that trust moves into taking a load taking a loan from us you know taking any service you know which they want to yeah. use us, right so i think uh, you know i think i would say till date the, the journey of blackbuck what we've been able to actually you know build uh, is only ability to work with truckers knowing them how to reach them how to get them to trust us and work with us i think this is like the only thing we've been able to achieve thus far and the journey of transforming trucking transforming freight for india i think is still yet to play out wow i'm going to go off script here uh, rajesh if you 
if somebody was starting the same business today and you talked about internet, I mean, a smartphone penetration, 7% on the driver side, I don't know what it is now, but assuming it has substantially changed, would you believe that your go-to market on supply side actually could have been a lot more online compared to being physical today? And I know there is a uh, gap of six, seven years in between now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think uh, the, the if, if let's say going back, like probably of the hundred uh, you know experiments we did, right, ninety five failed, right. And in in that hundred, I think the only thing going back, if I would have corrected, I wouldn't have tried probably sixty seventy experiments, right. And even today, trucker smartphone penet- operated smartphone penetration is hundred percent, driver smartphone penetration is seventy percent. But smartphone and internet penetration is not the decider factor of whom they would choose to work with. Right. Understand. They need to know the guy. They need to understand the service. They need to trust with money with you. And hence the go-to market would largely like be the same. Because 95% or 98% of our growth, right, has come in, in the geo era and the smartphone boom era. So 2015 to 18, we've put a lot of effort. But as I was mentioning to you, right, to win an industry, you need to be there. For the longest yeah. time with highest perseverance, highest intensity and highest resilience. And, you know, discontinuity will strike. Right? So that is essentially, you know, our story and, uh, and, and discontinuities did strike. And, uh, you know, we are, we're out there still waiting for more discontinuities to strike and uh, to be able to sort of, you know, uh, you know, transform the space. Got it. Got it. If you, I mean, at least now I have known you for seven years, actually. If you look back at this journey, Rajesh, any particular decision that you thought changed the course of the company? Because I'm sure there were many tough moments as well. But anything that comes to your mind as like that seminal moment, decision that you took that changed the course of the company? I think, um, I think, uh, you know, two parts, two two things I would say, right? And uh, this, this appears, uh, you know, it's very fuzzy because I think life generally there's nothing right or wrong, right? Yeah. Um, you know, so so one thing was that we did like I think the the, the best thing you know we did was we did a lot of experiments, right? And and in hindsight, right? Uh, you know, we could have sized experiments well. It could have like you know utilized companies' resources more judiciously, right? Right. We could have, uh, you know, uh, done lesser experiments also to be able to like, you know, do that uh, context, right? But I think that this thing actually worked both ways, right? Um, it, it, it is the reason why we exist today because yeah. we, we gave it a try in all directions, right? It is also the reason I think if I go back, I would sort of course, that's, that's, I think I would one, I would say that a decision on continuing experimenting in and out from all vectors of logistics helping truckers, helping enterprise clients, helping SMEs, SaaS games. We, we, we did every damn experiment which was possible in this space. And that gives us like the most information on what works, what doesn't work in this industry, right? And what's the real right go-to market to organize this, uh, you know, industry. The second decision I would say is that while there was like so many gush of experiments really happening, right? When COVID happened, right? Alongside COVID, uh, like COVID was not the only you know, context uh, back then. But I think along with COVID, there was essentially a time when Indian economy was slowing down. Trucking is always indexed to Indian economy, right? The growth rates were essentially, you know, slowing down, right? The real question we had to ask ourselves is that in midst of these plethora of experiments, what is really the right area we need to choose, right? To be able to, like, you know, deepen our presence, deepen our product market fit, deepen our impact, right? And I think that was a time when we had to decide on probably about, you know, 50 to 60% of our business verticals, right? Because, uh, you know, contribution margin, negative verticals were, it was very tough to like sustain them despite that yeah. they were showing some signs of product market fit, right? So I think, you know, during COVID, it was not only a COVID link decision, but also the core, you know, uh, you know, pivotal decision of how, what Blackbook would do, you know, from here on, right? And I think some of those decisions, some of that ruthless prioritization, some of those, you know, selections of the PMFs, which I think, you know, consolidation of all the experiments, what we've done, what's worked and replotting what Blackbird would look like in the future, I think was a very, very, very big decision because I think, you know, as a company from 2015 to 2020, we would have taken like 10 steps ahead, right? 
virtually it was looking like we are taking five steps backward right because let's say when you take decisions on saying we'll not yeah. do this and not do this and not do this and we will accentuate mm. this virtually mm. optically it was looking like you're taking five steps backward right but that is a reason why you know we would have taken five steps backward but we were able to take the 10 forward steps much more strongly like within like six months of those decisions right so i think that i think these two were probably the biggest i would say you know pivotal uh, timelines where which sort of define black book today is doing ton of experiments back into the 17 18 days and those today are the like fundamentals of the company right and 2020 ruthless prioritization to realign our go to market realign our impact realign you know why we exist helped us like you know with a lot of clarity and helps us position today at a strength where i think you know you know five years or, or like x years i think we should be we should be probably you know having a much more deeper and a widespread impact in the indian trucking ecosystem i'm actually going to switch topic a little bit here yeah which is your role as a founder now in an ecosystem where entrepreneurship is thriving they all look up to you as a successful founder today right so to begin with uh, what are some of the things that you do to now pay it forward to younger entrepreneurs who are just coming around the block yeah uh, i think i would i would say a hard question because uh, uh, you know human mind is selfish always i keep prioritizing things from a black book context you know from a family context from friends context right do a little bit around in this particular topic i think you know a lot more i would say should be done right and can be done um, i think what i've done the last 5 years is that uh, kept a 2 hour block you know every month for hustling founders to just like you know meet up even that be 20 30 minutes right it just brings i feel that though even that half an hour brings some clarity you know to them because they have few questions right. sort of answered right that's one thing i like as a regime i've done right um second thing is that uh, out of those connects right there are founders who become friends right <laughs> founders who end up yeah. like raising uh, you know big rounds right and and you know and you know so so it's essentially like the, like cultivates more friendship and with them i think you know uh, uh, you know spending more time and uh, whatever it is like uh, you know of help um, you know end up doing um and um, a third obviously is that uh, largely you know i've been uh, uh, you know uh, the, the partnership with stellaris partnership you know with the you know founders in which like whatever little bit you know i'm able to participate uh, you know in their rounds is towards people like you know around me generally mostly they're largely black book founders they're largely kgp founders right whom uh, you know i end up participating in their rounds and i think these are the you know two three things which i do and i think i would say in this i would hold myself as um, you know a very selfish person not doing much because i've seen lot of founders do much more and a lot you know to sort of enable and help entrepreneurs who are starting out well not necessarily true i think you are being too humble on this one but given that you touched upon stellaris i'm actually keen to keen to go to the question which is that you have been i remember that when we started our journey you have been a key member of the founder network right from the first day what motivates you to be part of this community uh i get to learn uh venture investing happens at the most cutting edge technologies cutting edge founders uh places where the world is changing uh when you are heads down and executing uh typically like i'm bothered about what a fleet owner's life is going to be like 23 and a half hours a day right uh and uh, uh what my company is doing what my people are doing so it's a very 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 siloed way of like executing for a very long time and i think uh you know participating with you guys um uh, helps me learn and i think uh, you know learning is like the only and only goal uh, with interacting uh, you know with people like you alok and your team and your companies your founders and uh, that just energizes uh, me got it oh, thank last, you last last 3 months i think every week i'm meeting uh, your vogo founders <laughs> oh nice yeah so so that's how it is right so they are very good friends of mine yeah No, that's very nice of you. Very nice of you as yeah. well. Yeah, Rajesh, uh, I know you talked about that you invest largely in black book founders and uh, IT KGP. But outside of that, any other lens that you have while you're investing as an angel in a startup? Um, so I think it's uh, I think my angel framework is a bit flawed because I um, I'm definitely not doing charity, right? i'm definitely like holding the bar on the companies and the founders i like 
but it's a bit flawed because i generally end up only investing in people whom i know and right. uh, or a founder is like really thinks that you know uh, me being in his journey would help him in some way or the other but i think that's too much over indexing but so i think that's the that's the only thing and uh, what i look for is uh, you know i think you know those those same things right in terms of why like what's really the reason why he really wants to do this i think and yeah. uh, um and and uh, and and obviously this the and the guy will figure out if the tam is very big he'll just figure out how he'll end up uh, you know building 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 a massive uh, journey got it got it um given that again you cycle through a lot of entrepreneurs as you i mean your friends from itkgp your juniors from itkgp blackbird folks and other people who even even we as we approach you as you see so many journeys today um uh, rajesh um i'm actually going to ask you a negative question which is that any advice you would give to emerging founders on what they should not do don't start up to be your own boss don't start up because you want to feel on ownership because those things if they are not there already then i think it's a problem before much before because when you start up you report to everybody who works in part of your team and you start up um like you know you literally are not fighting for ownership but for a cause and for uh, you know your people you know over a period of time and uh, so hence very self centric reasons should not be the reason to motivate people to start out but people may start out and then change <laughs> that's what happens um, because uh, you know entrepreneurship sort of flattens out you know everything in the in a very 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 long term and uh, start up for a reason which is going to because that's the only reason which will hold you in those very 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 tough times where uh, you know money fame uh, excitement um, you know any any selfish uh, uh, you know sort of need would not really take you through that you would thank say you. that bhai thank you main ja raha hu and uh, <laughs> you know aapki <laughs> company aapko thank you main nikalta hu apna time pass karta hu this is not really worth it right to take those uh, you know to go through those dark dungeon tunnels right so i think uh, having that core 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 hard reason is i think uh, you know very 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 important got it no very very true and very useful um switching tracks rajesh um again as you meet a lot of people you know and also as you see the blackbird journey also i'm sure you see different things happening in the ecosystem and lots of articles come out on what are the key trends in the startup ecosystem but any particular theme or trend that is exciting you the most these days uh i think um, uh, energy space uh, you know is something which i think uh, right. you know uh, all of us know this that uh, massively happening in the consumer space massively happen in the cargo space too uh, so i think energy as a sector um has been of a very uh, close interest over the last i would say 18 months and uh, uh, big companies will be built so and uh, a lot of exciting things would happen and uh, i think there are a lot of discontinuities to uh, ride on um, in the next five years so if somebody you know has been an energy entrepreneur over the last you know x years i think this is the time when you know the the market tailwinds and the market forces will make them look smarter yeah. like they just need to do their good work yeah very true very true i am going to get to the rapid fire part of this so this will be very quick right um uh, we'll not give you too much time to think on these so okay what's your favorite book a uh, man search for meaning i'll make it two by the way i love that book sorry i'm digressing but um uh, uh, outside of yourself who's your favorite entrepreneur <laughs> Elon Musk very nice very nice one advice that you would never give to founders all advices are very generic so take yeah. advices with a lot of caution <laughs> perfect all contexts are different all contexts are so 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 different yeah. great and if i take pole vault out of the way what's your favorite way to work out uh running and yoga interesting very interesting actually how often do you do it um weekly 
both sessions put together five six at least six oh, sessions wow. at least nice yeah. very nice very nice i think that's what gives the energy to people to sustain yeah and in these long marathons that we that you we need run. to be no, distracted you need to be distracted yeah, yeah. mentally fit <laughs> yeah. also bilkul bilkul yeah. bilkul so rajesh that was pretty much it on the questions so sir thank you so much really Always. appreciate you doing this